Let me get my people on up in here. Miss Gladys, if you can pop in and say hey, that'll be lovely. So I can mind you up. Yes, Lord, we gotta talk, honey. Mm. has come right on in here. I hope everybody's having a wonderful morning. It's been such a long time that you know, I've done a video, a live video at that. Let me see my mods. I know my mods are in here. So if you're in the room, mods, go ahead and send me a message. Shout out to everybody that's B1. Good to see you guys up in here. Good to see everybody um, that's joining me right now. It's morning, and honey, she still has her pearls on. She's got her robe. I'm going to talk like somebody auntie this morning. I'm going to talk like somebody auntie. I hope, yeah, I hope y'all got y'all earplugs in and all of that good stuff. Um, because this conversation is not going to be for children. Um, this is for grown folks, and this is definitely for uh, the B1 people. Shout out to everybody that's been um, riding with me, you know, a long time. Stacy Quentin, shout out to you, my birthday twin. Hey, B1 Stacy, hey girl. What's up, Think Tank? I be seeing you make real positive comments to you saying to be an awakened person. I don't see my actual mods that I was looking for. I see one of my mods, shout out to you, love you. Um, let me get you modded up globally back. And my moderator. Okay. okay, cool. Now we can goddamn get started. I got my Leo. Okay, globally black. Shout out to you, Gladys. I love you. I love the mod so much. These are actually real people. They don't be one people. That's the only people that I can have mod for me, honey, because I don't have time. And a lot of them have been riding with me for a minute. But let me say something. I put up a video yesterday. Um, and it was entitled, What the Fuck is Going On in Gambia? And I just, I, you know, for me, I've been getting a lot of messages. Thank you for people that actually do mean well and have good intentions. This roast and drag is not going to be for you. But it's for all the other fake motherfuckers out here that's acting like they give a good goddamn about some fucking kids. I hope 2020 was the year that woke you fuckers up. But 2021, this not finna be the year we gonna continue with the bullshit. We finna call out everything. Y'all don't give a fuck about goddamn kids. In the U.S., nor in Africa. Let's be very clear. You halfway like your own fucking kids now. You halfway like your kids now, so I don't want to hear shit. Don't send me emails. Stop sending me messages talking about I heard. No, I heard you last year. No, because you can't get your mind together. We can't figure out and get, get you know, <laughs> our minds right around the subject. Anyway, some of y'all saying when I said it last year, y'all was hollering about this is old. Somebody covered it already. So now this year, y'all hollering about the white British man that covered it. That's a year old. Well, honey, that was last year when I was motherfucking there. So we was covering it at the same time. So either way, it don't motherfucking matter. The children are still being raped and pimped out and molested. So what the fuck is the, what, what, what? I mean, what, what does it matter when it was goddamn recorded and when it was talked about the children are still being abused and molested and pimped out? Now the white man that came out and told y'all that desperate parents are willing in their children over the pedophiles. I told y'all that. I had to see the man pimping out his own motherfucking daughter. I had to eventually erase the video because of the people I was with, the two punk ass niggas I was with, one of which was my former business manager, I came to Gambia by my motherfucking self on a one-way ticket paid $700, and I set it off. I followed my ancestors' call. 
to go and do an impossible work that a lot of niggas would not do, could not do, and wouldn't have the courage or the balls to do, and definitely not by yourself. I went out to that motherfucker by myself with one bag. So everybody that stood around and watched that fuckery and told me to cool off and that wasn't the way when that shit went down with the little girl, they ain't know them. That ain't none of my man. I ain't had no husband. I ain't had no boyfriend. I ain't have nobody. I had me and my motherfucking phone and my conscience. And as I said in the video, y'all may want to watch the video that went viral. I'm not fucking here to get no goddamn likes and, and, and viral videos popping and shit like that. I saw a situation that was fucked up and I knew the little girl needed help. I was in the ATM getting cash as I used to do right there on the strip in Senegambia. And I saw a little two and a half year old girl, almost three, running up to the ATM window of the door peeking in and she saw me as kids do some crunchy weird looking white man with her yanks her back and i'm thinking off top this ain't his daughter this ain't his child what the fuck and why can't this little girl just innocently look in this fucking window why is he yanking her like she's a fucking dog. So immediately I know something ain't even cool with that situation. That's what, me, and I, I, I didn't even go to Gambia for that. I didn't go to Gambia for none of this shit. I was just looking for a place to fucking go so I could smoke my shit in peace. Peep out a place that was peaceful enough for black people. Where we ain't gonna have to get brutalized by the cops. We can smoke our shit in peace and ain't nobody gonna bother us and we can build amongst each other possibly. That's why the fuck I went because I was tired of getting nervous about being pulled over by the cops so I go out here not looking to set it off. And that's what I see. And so no, I ain't go out there for that. And as my hands were shaking, I started to record. I immediately knew something was off. I'm like, I'm recording this shit. My face was hot, my hands were shaking, and I came right out of that ATM room and I started asking questions. Hi, how are you? What's your name? The man immediately was shocked. He was weirded out, he was freaked out, and I started asking little girl questions. Hi, how old are you? Almost three, what's your name? Aisha, her name was Aisha. I said, are you okay, Aisha? I'm videotaping the whole thing, and many of you probably wonder, well, where's the videotape? When the white man saw what I was doing, and he got irate as fuck, as he, you know, of course would. Then the daddy comes out a few minutes later. I have these bitch niggas that was in my crew, who I no longer associate with. Bitch nigga Gambian and a bitch nigga that came from the States, former business manager, bitch made. I'm sitting in the car, getting the car, jumping the car. Please erase it. Erase it now, Art. This is not the way, Art. Don't do this, Art. So he takes my phone and I say, you know what? Let me let him erase this so everything can calm down because I'm having to reach in my purse and act like I got a gun to get this white man about my face. This is the first time I'm having to be fucking dealing with this shit by myself and I'm outnumbered. I ain't even want to tell y'all the whole motherfucking story. It's so embarrassing the way it went down from how stupid the cab driver was to the person that was with me to the American nigga that was my former business manager. How they all acted. I was so embarrassed to even really tell y'all the motherfucking story. But now niggas want details. The cab driver so fucking dumb. Not knowing a pull off is popping off. White man's running after me. We walking around the damn parking lot. I'm trying to get away from him. He's trying to get my phone. I'm like, get away from me. Get away from me. And the Gambian fool and the other dude coming up to me. I'm like, won't you get the white dude? Get him. Not me. They so busy worried about checking me. Some old fat, ugly 
lovely Gambian lady in her traditional wear. She come across the street. Sister, no sister, this is not right, sister. Sister, sister. That's what these fuckers are doing in my face while the whole thing's coming and popping off. So I get in the car. And, and I don't know which happens first. I mean, me being in the car, we eventually have to get out the car because everything is popping off. So I'm giving y'all the account kind of out of sequence. But I'm in the car sitting next to a bitch nigga. Pisces. I'm sorry, Pisces, man. Y'all gonna have to take this. I was like, see, this that Pisces shit. This that old weak bitch made Pisces shit. I said, yo, he gonna try to come through the window on me. The dad is screaming in the window at me. And the cab driver so stupid. What is going on? He don't know to just pull the fuck off. I said, this man is gonna try to come in through the and bitch ass Pisces from the state's going business manager. No, he's not. No, he's not. Said, yes, he is. Yes, he is. And what does the man do? Try to come through the window, try to open my car door and get me. So bitch made Pisces from the state's former business manager climbs over me and goes out of the window because it's going down. And I'm having to tell him, you better get ready because they're coming for the window. This is, this is, this is all happening. I wish I had two people from Philly with me. I wish I had had one or two real black people from the states that was with me seeing this dumb ass shit go down. And they take it up for the white dude and the black dude, the Gambian guy, hollering about, no, or this is my friend. I went to school with him when your friend from school is pimping out his daughter. And so he in cahoots with the white dude to pimp out his daughter. Okay, I got it. So if that's what y'all wanted me to do is not say nothing while y'all pimped out y'all children, just tell me that. Just tell me that. And let me address something. Somebody like me had the boss to move out. Fuckers wouldn't have had the boss to say anything. Number two, a lot of y'all, this not your path. Don't worry about me and why I went out to Africa. A lot of y'all that's indigenous and Indian and got the tribal shit. Honey, worry about your life and your path. Because I'm on my path and my ancestors are big to bring this message. Because y'all didn't even have the money. Honey. You didn't have the wherewithal and you just weren't called to tell this message because a lot of you wouldn't have said shit. All I heard after that when I talked about my account, all I got was deflections. Oh, ghetto baby mamas, go back, da da da, go back to the States and this and that and the third. Honey, I'm so glad y'all had this black girl with this satin bonnet on that's a ghetto hood from happily from the hood because our hoods look like the Taj Mahal compared to these slums and shanty towns that they living in. Thank God we got some ghettos. I'm proud. I'm so proud to be from a ghetto compared to this gutter that they're living in and allowing their children to be raped and molested in. God damn. Thank God it was me that was chosen. You got everything to say except the right thing to say. So here I am in making just chilling. I done moved on from this shit. This is, this is old news to me now. It's like y'all talking about Gambia. Like y'all used to date a nigga. Like it's a nigga I used to date named Gambia. And I've since moved on to a whole better life. I've even warned y'all about that nigga named Gambia and the fuck shit that he up to. I've warned y'all, I've told y'all, ain't spending my money and I left of my own volition. And the thing is, is that that whole life that I left, people lying, got all types of crazy shit to say. They, they, they got all kind of crazy shit to say. Don't worry about where the fuck I'm going. I'm here happy with my man making plenty of money, making moves, and accomplishing my purpose. We just like, a lot of y'all that's wondering where the fuck I am, when I'm going, I'm saying, you're not going to do anything anyway. You need to clock in and worry about if you, you can be on the phone right now watching somebody on YouTube. A lot of you are bitch made. You can't even can make your moves in life. All you can do is cut on this motherfucking thing and watch this shit. You couldn't even buy a plane ticket anyway. So I don't even worry about where the fuck I'm going, where I've been. Like, you niggas couldn't even do it. I've been flying around since I was 18, 19 years old as a flight attendant. Like,
Y'all can't talk to me about a satin bonnet. My people, you don't even, most of y'all don't qualify. Yeah, no, y'all don't qualify to talk to me, to ask me anything, to tell me you shouldn't go to Africa in the first place. Y'all hotels that's hollering about that, y'all go find some purpose in your life. Don't try to read my book right now. This book is way out of your league. Don't try to read my book and piece it together and wonder if I'm fulfilling my don't 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 worry about it. A lot of y'all not even fulfilling y'all purpose. Single, sad, depressed, and lonely and confused and not even knowing what you're here for. So just watch the show. Just watch the show. Give your thumbs up a thumbs down because that's all you're empowered to do at this point. But you certainly don't give a fuck about these kids. You don't give a fuck about saving the children. You don't. A lot of y'all don't give a fuck about saving children. You were just here for the ride. You were here for the drama. You were here for the drama. You were here to hate on a black girl that went all the way out to Africa and set it off. And I was the one chosen. It all started from me talking about what the fuck I saw and everybody was pissed off with my tone playing the tone politics with me no I don't like to I don't even like to do no ego boost and stuff going out to Africa was the best thing that could ever happen to me on a personal level a business level an emotional level a spiritual level y'all have no idea Y'all have no idea. Y'all are already jealous and mad off the tiny little bit of my life that I show you. <laughs> like, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, you'd be really upset if you really knew how how good and how the ancestors is blessing around this motherfucker. And I got a fucking new man in my life. Y'all really gonna be upset when y'all see him. Ain't he fine as hell? He fine as hell, smart as hell? Like, and y'all still talking about some old shit. We making new moves. Helping black people make investments and make money out here and making. We can't even, we can't convince all of the ignorant niggas that it's even money out here to be made in Airbnb and an investment and buying shit. Let them think that I'm scamming still. I don't give a fuck. That's what they needed to do. We don't see nobody making no goddamn videos about how they've been paid back. They've been paid, every investor's been paid back out of my motherfucking pocket. I love the way that sounded out of my motherfucking pocket from my business. But you don't, you don't see nobody making videos about that. They wanted me to be a scammer. No, but see what happened was everything that the elders told me. They told me the, be the betrayal was coming. I told my bitch made former business manager, don't trust those women. But no, as Pisces do sometimes when they're in their shadow bitch made period. You don't tell everybody the facts. So they was doing shit behind my back, using name, my name and opening up accounts in my name and taking the investment funds and using it for themselves. But y'all wanted to make it seem like I was the scammer and I was in cahoots with those motherfuckers and I never was. Nobody could tell you. So it's very e easy, I noticed, to trick and to scam our own people into thinking out of your own hero. And icons, you people don't Marcus Garvey a scammer. A lot of stock all the time. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. You're not with anybody. You're barely for yourselves. You can barely speak up and even defend yourself. So of course you're gonna believe any other thing because you like drama, black people. You wanted me to be a scammer. A lot of y'all hating ass bitches. You wanted me to be a scammer because I'm just way too cute. I'm too beautiful, I'm too goddamn smart. And I'm telling you some shit that you need to hear. I'm making you mad at, at, at your white daddies. I'm talking about your white daddy, your white Jesus. I'm calling you on your bullshit about being angry and resentful of the black man. I'm calling you out on your bullshit and lack of accountability around the way you act, black women. So most of you black women was already ready to hate anyway and ready to jump on the bandwagon. With these other hating ass African, African women with they shifted wigs and shit. And hell, if you do a wig, I need to go ahead and get a wig and just show y'all how to do this shit and do it right. Because I have never seen this in my life. I mean, more worse wigs I've ever seen. Good God. And mentally ill. I'm going to I'm get a wig just for y'all so y'all can see how good it's supposed to look. I used to do this shit for a living. So it bothered my soul to go.
go out to the Africans with all them mentally ill people that's wearing all the fucked up wigs and shit. So no, the African women, y'all didn't like me either. The black women, y'all was already hating me anyway because I was telling y'all ass what y'all needed to hear back in the States. So yeah, you was ready to call me a scammer and everything else. I, and you still, and you still single. All those people, K and K, whoever the fuck that is, and they need to stop putting my name in their mouth. I don't know them. These are those, that's a very good example of those flim flammy, mentally ill people. I saw those same people, those fat ass people that went to Ghana. Those same, when all that scandal happened, those same fat ass people that, that KFC squad, whoever the fuck they supposed to be, they was in the comments. See, I saw that. They in the comments, my art scammed me too. Interesting. But bitch, you in my inbox. I wish y'all could see how this bitch is in my inbox. Art, I love you. I Let's hook up. Da, da, da. But you don't realize I saw you make a comment and say Art scammed me too. Art ain't scammed no motherfucking body. Y'all were just really getting off on y'all selves and on the lies. Ignorant, foolish, psychologically unbalanced, emotionally unbalanced. Don't call no, none of them people know me. Just like T.I. said, you can see me in the streets, but remember, you don't know me. These bitches ain't even seen me, sending me messages, people acting like they rolling with me and ain't rolling with me. And all the while, I'm just dealing with it with grace. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do any reaction videos like that about all these idiots out here that needed to make videos with my name in their mouth to make some money. They don't know how to make money unless they're talking about me. That's what you guys got to see with them Gambian leeches. I did that video, the Gambian leech syndrome. That's all they can do is talk about the foundation of black Americans, our black, talented, young, gifted black asses, because they have no talent. That's all they did. Made up a goddamn petition. You need to find out who that young lady's father was. These same people making the petition, the same girl that's out here, Gambian lady, causing all this shit, her father is one of the people in COINTELPRO that brought down Thomas Sankara. I'm not even bullshitting right now, y'all. This is real shit. Go look in this bitch background. That's who her daddy was. See, this is this is controlled opposition. This is opposition to the people that are the revolutionaries. You're just seeing the same playbook over and over again. Y'all don't even know who the fuck these people are. And I done moved on with my life doing other shit. And y'all still being duped by lies. To deflect you away from the fact of the matter is. Gambians are being subjugated. Gambians are so subjugated and weak as water. They can't even protect their children. And all they use their energy for. was to lie, cover up their lies, cover up their bullshit. Stupid. All of y'all weren't stupid. It was a lot of y'all that was awake. But it was, it was a, a couple of y'all as hell. You got shook out with all of, the, all of the scandal. You just needed this brilliant, bright woman to be a scammer. No, honey. See, I need y'all to see the receipts of Cash App and PayPal where I took it upon myself to pay back investors that got hooked up investing in that piece of shit dump called Gambia. Everybody, I don't know a lot of real estate funds and people that have invested in places where if it went south and it didn't happen the way they wanted it to, they get their money back. We don't see it. We don't see videos about that though, but we see a lot of people making lies and clickbait videos. I don't watch them, but I see a lot of y'all saying they need to stop lying on you. I don't really care because you know, just as it's being served in the spiritual and natural realm, trust and believe. I'm not worried about these motherfuckers. The only way is up. You got damn right, Gladys. I have absolutely prevailed. But let me ask y'all something. Do y'all care about these motherfucking kids or y'all care about my tone or that? That you wouldn't have said anything. I know you wouldn't have. I sell and you, your massa has broke, broken. You've been broken. And that's why we can't depend on you for the liberation. That's the difference between me and you. A lot of y'all would not have said shit. I see a lot of your comments right now. Let me read this dumbass shit. And I love y'all, but see, it's, it sounds stupid to me now. And I really don't care um, that y'all talking and saying all this shit right now. No, 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 no. 
I don't want to hear this shit now because everybody holler about I've seen this before and nah, nah, nah. And, no, I don't want to hear that shit. Let's, let's just read a comment. I want to read y'all this shit because everybody's saying, I feel you. Somebody's on my Instagram. Go follow me on Instagram. I remember visiting Gambia while studying abroad in Senegal and seeing white couples on walks with one young Gambian child. I could sense something was wrong. We live in a world with such sickness. What's the sickness? Not saying shit? Or the fact that the people are using the babies as sex toys? See, the, it's, which one? Because, see, the sickness to me is the same sickness of complacency that white people have with racism. That's why I keep saying white people couldn't be so good if you watching this shit. Complacency is going along with it. You co-signing. Quietness is complacency. And complacency is damn near, you know, agreeing with it. So, you know, I don't understand. You saw it and you ain't say nothing. And that's what I did. Where is the father? Where is the mother? Where is this child's parents? Y'all saw that girl that went to Tanzania last year. And she was inspired by my video. She was in the womb school. She was in Tanzania. She went up to them people. Why? Why did she feel like she could? Because she was emboldened and empowered to do it because she had saw it done before. She was in the womb school. She went over there to Tanzania, did the same thing and checked those like y'all saw that girl. She came from my organization right up out of Georgia. She came to the womb school. I met her virtually. And she go to Tanzania and have to set it off because they have these mentally ill, mentally retarded, even either artistic or normal. It don't matter. But you can see what they doing. They are passing these children around as sex toys. You can set some off. No, I'm just that type of heifer that'll go up and, and investigate. Excuse me. Hey, stop. You know these people look weird. They don't even look as cheerful and inviting as the Beckys and Brass over here. These motherfuckers look like some 1800s Captain Hook. Oh, hey, we're out here seeking children. Like, they look real fucked up. They look like from Pirates of the Caribbean or some shit. From the UK where they all fucked up accents and shit. They look like they evil. So you sitting here with five white people that's looking like the reincarnation of the devil with two black babies on their lap and ain't nobody gonna ask questions oh okay yeah no exactly i saw a youtube video where the man had a boy living with him the locals knew but turned the other way baby they do they do they do i was messing with their money and they have resentment for black americans as i've always known i went there knowing that Y'all so goofy. Well, see, I already knew. I already knew the Africans didn't like us. See, I wouldn't have went over there. I, that's what I, I, okay, so, but you here not doing shit. And you talking about I should have went over there. Whoosh, oh, my God. We sound so ignorant. We sound so ignorant right now. We sound so foolish, ignorant, afraid, Lord. We sound so foolish as a people. Look at how we can't even protect our children globally and we want to sit up here talk about some motherfucking satin buns let's 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 get one thing done first black people we can't even protect the children from getting sodomized and we want to sit up here and act like we got a satin bunny crisis lord have mercy if y'all don't go sit down and get up out of my face right now We sound and look so, so confused. We look, conf we look like slaves. This is what it's called when you can't find your head from your ass. We got a, a crisis every other week. And we talk about the dumbest shit. And every comment you put in here that don't have nothing to do with these kids, you don't give a fuck about these kids. All you want to see is a YouTube war. You don't give a fuck about these kids. Take your fake ass on somewhere. This is this is this is us at the bottom, black people. We, we I think we've reached the bottom. 
We can't protect our kids from being sodomized and raped from our oppressors. And we, we worried about weebs and YouTubers. Oh, God. We so foolish and stupid. If you ever meet me in the street, don't, don't be mad if I don't become your best friend overnight. Because I kind of keep a wall up to us as a people. Because I know we sick. We the same people hollering about, you right, Art. But then the same people going to talk out the side of their mouth like the KFC squad talking about she scammed me too. Because we sick. We sick. We sick. Nobody's romanticizing Africa. We just talking some real shit. We don't care that you have been in Africa for 25 years, bro. This is not... We don't give a fuck. This is not a competition, bitch. Get the fuck off this broadcast, matter of fact. See, what you have to do is remember that we're not talking about nothing but these goddamn kids right now. This ain't your motherfucking broadcast, bro. Sis, bro, whoever want to talk about, I've been stopped romanticizing. We already talked about that. We ain't romanticizing this motherfucker, okay? That's why. Get that motherfucker out of here. We ain't romanticizing the motherfucking thing. I don't romanticize shit. I'm telling people what's really good out here. You know, what people need is attention. What y'all bitches need is attention. And now we want to talk about how this been going on. Lord have mercy. We sound so ignorant. It's been going on everywhere. So that means we don't, so we don't supposed to talk about it. What does that actually mean, dumbasses? You broken dumbasses. This is why the world don't respect you. Because when we start talking, you say that we shouldn't be talking. And it's, it's, it's going on everywhere. It's going on everywhere. This is why, this is why we can get just, this is why, Lord have mercy, you don't even like yourself. You don't give a fuck about these children. You barely give a fuck about your own. You barely, barely. And so thankfully, the ancestors chose somebody that had a backbone. <laughs> thankfully. They can't handle my delivery, but they can handle children being raped and sodomized. You see how foolish that is? You see how mentally ill that is? I, you, don't, you don't have to have any respect for them. When people allow children to be abused, you don't have to respect people that allow children to be abused. Y'all done got this shit all the way fucked up. Talking about I was supposed to respect them. See, what you don't understand is once I saw that, I lost all respect. When you see something like that, and for me to spend 10 more months there, nine more months after that, I could, and to just see the ignorance just continue and continue and continue. I came back feeling so proud to be black. I did. Cause see, you can't point out no black community where they are openly pimping out black children. Name the neighborhood where they're openly pimping out black children to white people, to old white people. You don't have no black neighborhood. See all this false equivalency and oh, we do this here. No, 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 no. Even when I was showing you how bad the conditions were and stuff, we got places in America that look that bad and run down, sweetie. If it is, it's not the norm. That's the gag, okay? So you really don't have to keep with these false equivalences. It's a reason why we call first well and those motherfuckers are called third, okay? God damn it, and I don't even know where the numbers came from, but nigga, we didn't skip some degrees. It's some degrees of separation and experience in this bitch, okay? Okay. So while y'all trying to act like, well, okay, I get it. We need to fight globally because if we not free in one place, ain't none of us free. If Africa ain't free, none of us are free. I've been telling y'all that. But you don't want to be African, but you indigenous, and it ain't our fight, and you shouldn't have went there. Can you figure out the, what the fuck you need to do? We can't even figure it out. That's what I call. You can't find your hair from your ass, black people. This is what it's being called. Program, you're, you're dumped down. A lot of you already even got the shot, so it, it, you just, just no hope for you. You don't care about these children. Y'all don't care. 
Y'all don't care. You don't care about your own people. All you have is hashtags. All you got is hashtags. You ain't got nothing on these kids. After Trayvon Martin, we should have shut that shit down. Emmett Till, the community stopped. Ever since Emmett Till, we have gotten more and more afraid and buck broken. Broken, afraid, docile. Drinking that Jesus juice. That is why it had to be a law made. Eight days after we got to this motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what your damn theory is, if we African or not. I can't decide, okay, well, goddammit, we need the warrior spirit from the goddamn Indians. Woo, 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 woo. Or we need the motherfucking warrior spirit from the Africans. What the fuck? I, we need the warrior spirit from, from either side of the motherfucking bloodline. So I can we stop arguing? And just figure out why people ain't shit and fight against them but we fight against each other about where we fucking come from lord have mercy and marcus garvin didn't say it a people without a knowledge of their history it's like a tree with no roots we still arguing about that lord have mercy so so it don't matter what the children are. I mean, if you could, those that that believe the ideology that we're global citizens, right? Well, globally we getting our ass kicked. Globally we ain't standing up for shit either. You done voted for Biden. You done voted for people that don't give a fuck about you. A people with no economic power have no political power. So we're giving our economics to every other group except ours. We can't get through to the damn coons because they siding with every other group but our own. The Africans is calling us Akatas. But we don't seem to even know the history of who we fucking are. Huh. No, the Africans that swirling, I already saw it. I don't have nothing for you Africans that's swirling and worshiping white people. I had so many African people call me racist and an African because I, I was the one to stop the situation with the little girl being helped out. African. Can you imagine? That's when I, I knew those fuckers was sick. Gone with this heap of shit. Y'all, we sound foolish. That's 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 the race we sound like. Fuck your hotel, your conscious, your five percenters, your e. Fuck all of that. Y'all sound like just Negroes. You just you you just sound like Negroes. You're Negroes. You Hebrew one day. You hotel. You this. You talking about the Most High. You talking about Lord God. I promise. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, cut it out. Stop. Don't come up to me telling me anything about what you now believe. You're Hebrew and da da da. I, I promise y'all, y'all sound so silly to me. You sound just as silly as the people that voted for Biden, okay? And he ain't giving all shit. I'm downtown here in Macon, and it's a Jewish temple near our home. It ain't no benefits of me going into this Jewish temple fucking with these white people. So I wish the goddamn I would call myself a motherfucking Hebrew. Are you out your fucking mind? Can y'all stop with this shit? Because the ones that's talking about Hebrew, y'all don't even really be looking right. Y'all be looking crazy in the face. A lot of y'all need therapy. I'm, I, I'm sorry, y'all. You got bad identity crises. Okay, let's just let's just let's just agree that white people ain't shit. Stay Hebrew, keep your costumes on. Honey, it's fine. Keep keep your little costume on if you need to. If you need a thumbs down this video, cause cause I talked against the Hebrew. Oh God, honey. Blow your show far. <laughs> they be having the whole get up. <laughs> We are the Hebrew Israelites. I went to a church one time when they went through a Hebrew phase, a Jewish phase too. I really did. I really did. I did. I did. 
We Hebrew Israelites? We look stupid as hell. Lord have mercy. <laughs> You're gonna have a whole garb on. I got, I don't know why I do this. <laughs> Woo! This nigga just had a garb on. Oh, 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 do I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Fuck it. Fuck it. We're going on here. They be having a fucking robe on, don't it? These are the two the scripts. The, the Dead Sea Struck Scrolls. No, we ain't kicking the Hebrews out. We just gonna roast y'all silly looking motherfuckers. No, we y'all got the whole outfit on though. No. Y'all got the outfit on. Y'all walking in. Y'all walking in. Y'all walking in. I'm sorry, y'all be looking crazy to me. Head wrapped up. You know. It's queen. I'm just trying food. Okay? And y'all in here arguing with this African. But I'm gonna tell you now, I do not identify. Sir, I just wanna get my vegan mac and cheese. Please. Please. Y'all arguing with people at your, your soul vegetarian restaurants and shit. You got this garb on, you wearing all white. It's like, God damn. This is, this, it's like, and I'm, you Hebrew? You Hebrew. Oh my God, okay. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Girl, okay. <laughs> all right. Girl, I came with y'all with this shalom and it. Israel, Yisrael, Yerub, Yahu, Israel, and Yerish, Yahushmael, I can't do it. I'm done. Okay? Okay? Thank you. It's time to put in some real work against these evil powers. He said, I'm tired of people going through these identity crises and shit. Like, girl, Israel, Mishmael, honey, Get me to the, you know, what you really got to understand is don't get the hell out of my face. Try me to the side and tell me these little hiccups, y'all. But anyway, was, we so weak. We so docile. We don't give a damn about I don't need validation. You know, my work is done. My work is done. Making, um, yeah, it's nothing wrong with the making internet. Our makers got a lot of money to be made out here, but I'm sure you're not gonna come out here and make any money or invest. But you wanna worry about the internet though. That's how our people are. We really serious about the silly and silly about the serious. Even that just made me think about it. It's so many ignorant niggas out here that's just slow. On, on make it and just slow in general like whether we in Africa or America we have to understand we have the brilliant basic and the brain dead you can tell them look YouTube don't want to get this message out you can tell them anything you can walk on waters and these niggas will say oh it's because she can't swim so it don't really matter you got to keep on doing your thing you have to really keep doing your thing and that's why a lot of you aren't doing your thing and making big moves because you worried about these silly ass niggas and what dumb shit they gonna say and you have to realize that 90% of our people are silly as fuck. They have, have no direction. They looking for somebody to give them direction. And when you're an artist like me, when you're a brilliant intellectual, you are the trendsetter. We're not the followers, we are the leaders. So we don't go to the comment section and people that's just watching the show to get any strength and to get any directions or planning and to do anything. Those are not the people that's going to build anything. Those are the people that's going to be the Negro naysayers on the sidelines and tell you that it cannot be done. Meanwhile, they will watch and tune in to everything that I do. Even my small moves are gigantic moves for people like that. I've been done with Gambia. My 
purpose has been served there. My purpose is being served everywhere I go. I'm a light into everybody's path that I get in contact with if you haven't paid attention to that. So when it comes to standing and being who you are and standing firm, you got to be able to just completely ignore a lot of bullshit in your own people. A lot of our people are stupid and afraid. Stupid and afraid. They don't know anything. They waiting on instructions. They waiting on somebody else to gentrify making. They waiting on somebody else to take it over that don't look like them, but be the first people in line to say, oh, well, we so tired. No, 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 no. See, you're just not privy to the conversation. You're not the people that's making those type of moves. You are. A lot of our people have been programmed. We're not, we're afraid. We oh, damn sure would never take any love, health, or spiritual advice from the average black person. Cause they, seriously, you, you, you know, I, I hate it for a lot of y'all that single broken confused. Cause if you try to find it in your own community, you're going to be fucked. I hope you figured out what you're here to do and what your big plan is in life and how to get your heal and how to get past trauma, how to be powerful, how to leave this earth, leaving a legacy. A lot of us just have no idea about it, but we just want to naysay and, and throw salt at the people that's actually trying and the people that are doing it. Yeah. Yeah, we, we finally been put on trial, but we don't want to take accountability for anything. We want to still talk about my tone and this and that. I wore this, I wore this satin bunny for a reason. Cause we until we can really protect our children, let's shut the fuck up over what's being worn and shit. I get it. I understand. But see, the bigger issue is that we look like a lot of slaves on the plantation right now that can't find their head from their ass. We look like people that can't take up from themselves. When you can't fight, you find a lot of stuff to distract you. You really do. You really do. You'll have a lot of other situations that come to distract you. That's for goddamn sure. If y'all are interested in coming to Making for the uh, Making Home Tour, I have at least four spots available for that. Um, and for people that want to get their teeth fixed, it, it, I got some spots for that in July. We done moved on to dental vacations and properties. So much Airbnb money and that's to be made and making. We ain't even finna like stress nobody out about coming here. That's why we love it because people are sleeping on it. That's why we love it. We we love it. I like it. And but I'm a person that's gonna tell people about good deals and stuff like that anyway because yeah, it's not about just us. It's about spreading out to the family, and we need to be buying back blocks and stuff like that. But yes, um, you, honey, me and my man around here enjoying it. So if you got your man, you got your family. You got a mindset where you want to build somewhere quietly, take advantage of an Airbnb market um, and be around some B1 people. Definitely come to Macon um, because don't listen to all that bullshit. The people that's coming on the tour, y'all are amazing. I already like the energy I'm saying. They are B1 people. They're on code people. These are conscious black people that hear what I'm saying. These are the people that I like to be around me and people that's wanting to make money and just, you know, expand their horizons. We don't have to be the last people that find out about the good stock and the good investments. We are always the last, okay? Uh, but yeah, I, child, you don't even need good credit to do this shit. We we gonna wait, wait, wait. All y'all that need to wait, and I'm finna wait, and I'm finna da 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 Them finna people, you never, you're not. You're never gonna do it more than likely. Um, it's people that's still waiting two and three years. Oh, my, my two and three year plan, baby. I don't do them two and three year plans. I do six months to a year plan. One month, three months, six months. Y'all move very slow. Y'all move very slow with your life. And that's why you don't ever get anywhere because you're afraid. I need to fix my career a little bit first. No, actually, you need to get started. Get your ass started. Because we didn't already told you, it's creative finance in all types of ways. You can buy shit with your LLC, buy shit with your business credit. You don't have to have your own personal credit. These are the things Robert Kiyosaki, Donald Trump, Oprah, and all the rest of them that was writing books, they left us out of these conversations. 
And, and we still worrying and fear-based, acting like we can't get nothing. If anything, Africa showed me that life is a goddamn monopoly game. One, thank you, Africa. Thank you. I said we go around acting like we can't do shit. As long as they keep you feeling like people are used to seeing Negroes be millionaires and make all types of money in Atlanta. Here, it's only to the good old boys club. I know that feeling because I'm from Birmingham. I know when you go to those pole dunk country places where they more. It's not. The internet, technology, social media, it has leveled the playing field. It's about information, your access to information. So if you don't know how to do something, you know, it's like you're going to think it can't be done. You're going to think you can't do it. All you need to do is to see some people doing it already. That's what's so important about us making moves and influencing that's what influencing is really about thank god for people like the bad family thank god for people that i was watching the dr shauna's everybody i was watching was just showing me that it could be done i see you in the chat room sis and i appreciate y'all we're just showing y'all it can be done but see we've been taken out of the conversation we don't feel like this is the game for us. We don't feel like property owning is our game. We don't feel like real estate is our game, black people. We feel like entertaining and hoochie coochie, dancing. And I know I'm sounding old saying hoochie coochie. You see what I'm saying? It's just like she said, just do it. Just do it. The money is there. That's right. Just do it. But all we doing is entertainment. We doing twerking. Okay. And we want to rap. But we don't think real estate is our game. We don't think stocks is our game. Thank God for this black man that came in my life and the black men that have been in my life in the private business sector. All the way from lobbyists like my son's father, doing business development, grant writing, opening up a world for me I never saw. I mean, I'm seriously like just hustling off of Facebook and I'm in, in my life just progressing with everybody I meet, every relationship I'm in. I'm like, oh my God, we've been left out of these conversations about business thank god for my black men and my black women that's really been in business and dropped some game on me we need to know that we can do it black people we can do so much more that's really what africa showed me i could damn it's monopoly and then this dude my man coming and showing me he's a broker how you can just flip land i said wait a minute flip what flip land go to blacklandflippers.com flip it land he said, you ain't got to worry about no toilets or no tenants. Making 30000 here, 10000 there, every deal. I ain't trying to tell y'all this man money. But this is people quiet. He's a Georgia Tech guy in IT. And his Zodiac sign, they already quiet. These people are quietly doing these types of, of, of business models and strategies in real estate. And we all know nothing about it. So here we got Airbnb. You seeing all... We can look online and it's an actual program. You can see how much is being made in Airbnb in each city, each block. Just like you can look up comps for homes, you can see the comps for the Airbnb market in each city state. Atlanta is saturated. So we done came out here like, well, damn, we see all of these properties available. And the Airbnb market is heavy. And it's only a couple people making that money. So, yeah, it's a lot of money to be made in real estate and land flipping and all types of shit. Our people are fast asleep. Just give them a damn comforter, child. Put them back to sleep. But we're not involved in it. But what we, what we do, oh, art is scamming. She's scamming. No, 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 you just don't know how to do this. We so busy not making money. Anybody that's actually making money, we got to call them a scammer. That's just a playbook. That's how we do. That's how we do. That's how we do. That's how we do. All I can tell y'all is all these houses, these animals, this big ass place that we starting here. You can get a big ass place under 800 and Airbnb it out and make 3000 a month. What? People was doing that anyway. Girl, I know about the Airbnb game. I just stayed in them in Atlanta. I know how they make it $800 in each room in these piece of shit houses. And at least I'm like, well, damn, you can get something nice out here. 
People of Airbnb in our shoeboxes, girl. <laughs> Airbnb said you ain't even got to own your shit. In 2017, when I got started and I fucked with Airbnb, you ain't you had to own it. But, but as it's grown, you don't even have to own it. Just like with Uber. You don't even have to own your car. They have a drive and ride, pay to ride type of program where you can just lease the car and drive. Same with goddamn um, Airbnb. You ain't got to own this shit. You don't have to own it. But you can sit up here and make all this money in Airbnb. Well, damn. Let's just, let's just, you know, get somewhere where we can get a lot of the properties. We're making Columbus, making Columbus, Augusta, and even Birmingham. Y'all, I swear to God, Birmingham, it, yeah, I'm checking for her. Because these are small markets that have big Airbnb money, though. And a lot of properties sitting up in a lot of land. The South got so much land just sitting. They just, just sitting. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sitting and eating. Y'all turn my way. Yes, damn it. I've been sitting and eating. <laughs> okay. You said we Airbnb in a shoebox in Brooklyn. Exactly, girl. You can Airbnb the shoebox. Girl, let me tell you. You can Airbnb this storage right here. This piece down here is 800 this little piece in the center is six, okay, per room. This piece up here is 800, and this little cubby hole, that's pulling in a thousand. That's the way Airbnb works. So this your little box, and your little box costs you 1200 a month, and in this little part of the box, you are already getting about 1600. I said, well, damn, y'all like this ghetto, this ghetto diagram. I said, well, damn. Okay, black people in Atlanta, we was, you show black people, it was over. Once we figured out we could Airbnb a shoebox, it was like, oh, okay. So that's, that's what it is. Shoe, girl, sitting up in here eating, living that good old country life. I said, well, shit. All you can do is eat, cook, I eat, live nice. I'm serious. Girls and shit for no reason and damn, um, you know, in the morning. I'm serious. And the thing I love about living in Macon um, is that it's just an hour from Atlanta. I'm not here for my social life in Macon. These people in Macon is different. The black people in Macon is different, baby. They different. The white people in Macon, everybody look like they just came out of rehab somewhere for meth. Okay, the white people there, the Brad and Becky's of Atlanta, they look fly. Okay, the white people in Atlanta look fly. These people, no. <laughs> this is this is boom 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 Jim Bob, well, I think those Negroes have moved on into Macon and have themselves a time. Going down to Macon and have ourselves a time. Going down to Macon and we'll have ourselves a time. That's what this is. You're not going to come. Going down making and we'll hammer ourselves a time. Girl, the redneck. Oh, at least they're here. Everybody the black people is at least 250 pounds. Everything you eat, all the soul food is hitting here. All the soul, the potato salad, all the sides are hitting. All the sides. If you go to a barbecue place, all the sides, the, the baked beans, the potato salad, the green beans, the greens. The, the sweet potato pie, the red velvet, all of it's hitting. All of it's hitting. <laughs> ah, I want to eat it all, Lord. Ah, oh, Lord, all the food good, Jesus. Oh, Lord. And, and it just speaks to my southern spirit. It, it speaks to my spirit, Lord. That's why I'm sitting up here detoxing right now. Y'all, to my give you a swirl, a twirl or something. Honey, let me show you how I fed out of that. And I low-key like it, though. Y'all see this shit? Hold on. Girl, <laughs> baby, I like church chair because we still get that real fun.
Do you see this shit? <laughs> girl, look. This shit is sitting right. Girl. Boom. That's, my, that's what making is doing. This is greens, cornbread, baked beans. Girl, all of it, honey. All of it, all of it. Don't you fuck around and kind of make it thinking you finna be scanning. No, I'm saying I'm, I'm finna lose all this shit. But me and my man, we laying up. We laying up. About to have this nice trip. I can't wait to meet y'all. The people that's coming on the making, making tour. Don't come down here acting like you um are too good for some damn greens. Don't act like that either. Because we gonna have some soul food. Um, And it ain't vegan, okay? I'm just being honest right now. Um, mm -mm. We are not those people, honey. And just one time for, for the one nine. And my girl, Taisha, you'll be so... You'll be, be so proud of me. Yeah. Girl, okay. My sister, Taisha, she here in this motherfucker. And we gonna go do us some, some lessons. So, yes, honey. When my man even go up the street to the store with my man at home, baby, she has the gap, okay? Mwah. I have no idea how to use this shit for real, but let a motherfucker try me, baby. I learned it so fucking quick. Shit. Girl, I'm gonna play. Honey, the tour is, um, <laughs> let me hold this gun. I don't know it. That made me feel right in my spirit. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Girl, the tour is June 27th and 28th. Okay? And we're going to see 10 homes. Homes that you can rent out. Homes that you can do Airbnb. Whatever you want to do. We're going to see all of those homes. And I'm going to have some wine and spirits for us. I'm going to have some food for us. Okay? So, um, <laughs> clap, clap. We're going to be loaded. We're going to be on code. I um, think Taisha gonna be able to come too. I just can't believe Taisha has come from Seattle. Y'all don't know Taisha. Go to her channel, Taisha Essex. She's came from Seattle to Georgia. She started off as my supporter who's become my homegirl now, okay? From Seattle to Georgia. She came to Macon. I was like, why is she in Macon? Blah, 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 blah. I'm in Atlanta, right? Lo and behold, here my ass come to Macon. Where she at? Come on. Come on. God damn it. And, and, and need some weed. <laughs> Girl, we got that together. We, you know, mm -mm. we got all that together. We got some chocolates and shit too. Some edibles, honey. But anyway, um, you know, I, I just really appreciate my people that that I already knew what time it was, honey. We are hand making. Thank you for the support. Um, for the people that's coming to the making, making tour, we're gonna be making, making something great. Okay, because it's all of this property just sitting up, y'all. We don't have to wait for other groups to take stuff over. That one property I showed y'all, the two bed and one bath, it looked like a duplex. The one where I was walking and sashaying up or whatever, you know, um, that was not a duplex. But somebody, that's like that ghetto-ish area, but somebody see the value. I said, oh, gentrification, is, you can smell it in the air. So we're here way beforehand. Yeah, I think it happened. It'll probably happen like a big boom, you know, because Macon has Mercer University and stuff like that. It has a PWI, predominantly white institution like Mercer. Mercer's here, so it's not a college town, but it's a it's college here. And it's a lot of chic Southern living, but it's also a, a lot, lot of property and real estate and land that's just sitting the fuck up. Nobody's anything with. And you don't have to even have the cash, all the cash down. You can go in with somebody. You can also do creative financing. You can do the Airbnb thing. Just finance that shit, get it, and make you a whole bunch of money, black people, and get you some bread. We too old to have, you know what I mean? A lot of us ain't seen $100,000 a year and, you know, seen some real money in our life. I'm being honest right now. I know I hadn't. I, had, I wasn't that person that was just pulling it in like that. I had one job as a flight attendant. That was it. Worked in TV and radio. Had some little small job. But, like, making some bread... I, you know, the men that, thank God, the men that were in my life, I have seen them make those big, you know, big salaries and them big deals and close big deals. But it's when you in certain industries like real estate, you know, I can see him close a $10,000 deal, close an $8,000 deal and not be as excited about it. He's like, oh, it was just $8,000. Like, um, that's a bomb. You can live like this. 
you can you can make money like this. You can make money off YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and all of this shit. We have been left out the conversation, and instead of finding out what the people are doing that are making the money, we'll just throw rocks at them and hope that they fail. But that don't ever happen, though. So find your find you know your own level of success. Find your tribe. Find your purpose. You know what I mean? Because I definitely found mine. I'm so happy that it took me through Gambia. So grateful it took me through Gambia because coming back to GA and coming back to stateside, a sister's more grateful than I've ever been. Um, God, I'm like, I just want to tell people like, honey, if you ain't been to Gambia, you ain't really seen some struggle life. You can do anything, honey. If they used to say, oh, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. No. If you can make it in Gambia, you can make it anywhere, girl. That's we talking about no lights, no power, water running, water and shit. Watching children being raped and molested and, and pimped out in the streets and all that time. I came through that. I came through with, with just a level of spiritual development and gratitude like you wouldn't believe. Now I'm looking at making like shit. Honey, we got internet power, grocery stores. We can do anything. Like, we can do anything, black people. Like, damn. But I will be back in Africa. Um, September, I'll be going um, to Ghana. I'll be in Ivory Coast. I'll be in a lot of different places in Africa, honey. My, uh, You know, the investing and buying land and building my village. We're building villages in Georgia, and we're going to build a village in Ghana. You know, that's just what it is. So, um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, shit. You know what I mean? Honey, I'm enjoying this M. Power, water, grocery stores. Why wouldn't I, Errol? Do you have a gun, Errol? Why do you have a gun? No. She has a gun. No, no. White people are so comfortable with guns. That's why they can kill our asses. Black people, when we have a gun, why do you have one? Yeah. So anyway, let me get out of here, y'all. I gotta get ready for my men, honey. <laughs> and I'll be here protecting my myself. That's <laughs> hard to bring on this live, okay? Taisha has inspired me to be on my shit for real, for real. We the only people in race of people who are actively being hunted down. And we sitting duck and not into bearing our own arms. Ain't that programming? That's programming how, if I ever heard it. You being actively murdered and shot and hunted. And you don't feel that you have to have a gun. That is how we know most of us were drinking the Jesus juice and we're broken. We were, we were bred. We were programmed to be slaves and to be victims. Period. How could you not have a gun at this time? Especially in... Oh, Mike, and hey, everybody talking about be careful with a gun, Queen. Y'all, with this. Thank y'all for joining me. Thank y'all for, thank you for even, you know, traveling with me. We're in Gambia, seeing all that fuck shit. I y'all are making. some amazing people on the dental tour come on dental tourists on a july trip i'm gonna do it for the fall so um thank y'all for joining me thanks to everybody that's been supporting me overseas and back home in ga i'll talk to you guys soon look at this beauty Mwah. yeah